Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little, and I am currently in Malta. If you guys watched my stream last time I was in Malta, I had a pink room. This time we have an entirely white house. There is no paint anywhere. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. And um, I'm looking forward to this trip. I flew in from New York this morning. My goal was to stay up until about 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. tonight. Turns out one of my roommates is getting here at 11, so I need to stay up to let him in, so that worked out perfectly. And I, I think I'm on the right sleep schedule. I worked a little bit harder than I typically do to get on the right sleep schedule before this series. In Barcelona, I was a little bit tired, and some of the previous overseas stops, I just was not with it. But I think I'm pretty well set to wake up at the proper time tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is the first event for me. It's a 2,000 euro event. They call it a high roller, but really it is a 2,000 euro event that's going to get about 500 people or more, hopefully. The one in Barcelona, I think, got seven or 800 people, so a huge event for just the random preliminary event. So that's exciting. The next day and the next day are the main event, so you get to play it whether or not you make day two of the 2K. And we're going to go from there. There are a lot of tournaments here in Malta. Every day there's a 2K or a 5K or something like that. Unfortunately, they've raised the rake of their turbo tournaments. Now it is roughly 10% and all of them besides the 5Ks and five, uh, everything below a 5K. 5K and higher, they're still 4 or 5 or 6%. But either way, the rake is still fairly tough to beat. And for that reason, I may or may not be skipping some of these turbos depending on what they look like. If they look very soft, I'll play. If they look marginally soft, I'll probably skip them. I hate flying across the world only to have to be disciplined with tournament selection, but that is part of being a professional. You can't just come out here and blast at everything in sight. So that's that. I'm going to take it easy. We have a pretty great apartment this time. I think it's going to be a nice, chill trip. I'm going to focus on playing poker and relaxing. Hello, everyone. We are about to start the main event of EPT Malta. Yesterday I played online. It didn't go too well. Actually, it didn't go too bad because um, I did cash the Sunday Million and then also the Sunday Major twice. You get to play that one two times. And I lost with Kings versus Aces in two of the three. So that was unfortunate for lots of chips. But uh, now's the main event. It looks like it's going to be a big tournament. We're, I'm excited about that. I'm going to go do my best. <laughs> I just busted the main event, so that's no good. Um, I made it through day one. I actually had a lot of good cards in the first level of the tournament, and I doubled up within the first two hours or so. So that was pretty sweet. And then from there, I didn't really have anything happen until the beginning of day two. I started off at a really tough table, but I knew it was gonna be first to break, so I played pretty nitty and got out of there. And then there's a hand where I had ace five. I defended the big blind, and it came ace five two. It's pretty good. I checked, got bet, I check raised. Turn was another two, which doesn't really change much. I bet big, he called. River was a five, which is also great. Actually, the five should kill my action a lot because I'm really, my opponent should have a lot of hands like ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, etc. So I didn't think he would call a bet, uh, any size bet, but I thought he would for sure check if I, if I checked to him. So I bet big, 21K, and he thought for about five minutes and paid me. So that was good. That put me up to about 95,000. Um, a little while later, this guy got it all in, an older guy, got it all in with pocket aces against the kids' pocket kings to double up to about the same stack as me. Then two hands later, I get pocket kings, I raise. Same tight guy, re-raises. Then this good, good loose aggressive kid cold calls, which who knows what that means? It's probably just a very good pair. I, of course, four bet. So I made it um, 2,500. Tight guy made it 6,300. Kid called. I made it 18,000. Old guy instantly went all in. <laughs> I was thinking, no, you give him king's aces twice back to back. But whatever, I couldn't find a fold. And it turned out he had ace king. And the board came queen, four, two, jack, ten to give him a straight, and then I was out. So just like that, I had roughly one and a half times average, lost a three times average chip pot, 
now here I am on the balcony. Not gonna jump. <laughs> um, so later there is a 2K tournament. Uh, later today, I think in about an hour and a half, I'm just gonna take it easy and enjoy my enjoy myself. I really, I think, I feel like I played pretty good in the tournament. I don't think I did anything that was bad at all. Um, so, I mean, I'm happy with my play. Whenever I'm happy with my play, I don't really care when I bust because I recognize busting's part of poker. Obviously, it'd be nice to win, but it's not how it goes today. So, I'm gonna relax for a little bit and get back in action. There's pretty much a tournament every day. I believe there's a 2K today, a 1K tomorrow, and then a 10K the next day. A lot of people skip the 1K if they have, a, if they have that day off, but I think that's actually a bad idea because if you make it to day two of the 1K, you probably have 12,000 euros in equity or something like that, so it's almost like you just satellite it in, <laughs> but you're actually close to cashing out your equity. So um, I'm for sure playing the 1K. I think it's silly not to, especially given the field will be very soft. And that's that. I suppose I will update if anything good happens. So I just busted the high roller right at the end of the day. That is unfortunate. Um, I feel like I actually played really good for most of the day. And then I marginally lost my mind on two hands. Um, the first one I think is actually fine, where a loose aggressive guy raised, this is early in the day, we're very deep stacked. I three bet ace nine offsuit from the button, um, good hand to three bet with as a bluff. He four bet, I five bet, he went all in. And I'm okay with that. I ended up losing like 10,000 chips or something like that, which is 50 big blinds, I think. But I really don't think that one was that bad. But so it always feels dirty to, to bluff off 50 big blinds pre-flop. My next hand, I think, I clearly lost my mind. I was playing against this player who was talking to a player who I knew was like overly capable and somewhat crazy. That doesn't necessarily mean this kid's crazy, but it's good to know who people associate with. Also, he had cold four bet once, and he had check raised the river once, if I remember correctly. So he was playing tight-ish, aggressive-ish, but he was certainly capable. So he raised to, should go get my notepad. He made a raise. I called on the button with ace check off suit. He raised from fourth position, third or fourth position. Flop came ace seven two, two diamonds. I had no diamonds. He checked and I checked. At this point I thought his range was ace x, kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines, eights, etc. And I thought if I bet, I would probably not be able to get three streets of value. So I thought I would check behind and try to make my hand look weak. That way maybe he would think that I am trying to bluff him off of his, you know, quote unquote obvious ace x or pocket tens or queens or whatever by the river. Uh, turns to 10, he checks again and I bet 3,900 into the pot. And I do this occasionally where I'll try to like spaz in some chips to make it look like I'm trying to push the guy around. I don't know if it actually does anything, but it's amazing how often it gets called. And I expected my opponent to call here with most of his flop checking range besides maybe king queen and king jack and whatnot. So I bet 3,900 into the probably 6,000 pot, give or take, whatever it was. And he thought for a little bit and called. River was a king. So he checked, and at this point, I decided to bet 11,000. And I did that mainly because I thought that if he had queens or jacks, which I thought was most of his range, or ace x, that he would call. At least strongly consider calling. Because his hand looks exactly like it is, right? And if his hand looks, ex looks exactly like it is, I know that, I'm probably going to try to bluff him, and 11k was a fairly big bet. So I thought it would look bluffy. If it looks bluffy, the guy should call a lot. So I bet 11K, and he thought for a while, looked marginally uncomfortable to me, and then went all in for 30,000 more. So um, I was getting whatever it was, two to one, give or take, a little bit, be a little bit better than two to one. Not that it matters. <laughs> I guess it does matter, actually. So what I convinced myself of was that he had exactly pocket kings, for a rivered set, did I say the river was a king? River was a king. Um, a rivered set, or queens or jacks that he's turning into a bluff. And I did not think he would do it with ace x. I did not think he would do it with like a random ace queen that he possibly had. So I, I thought that I, I really was looking at exactly pocket kings or pocket queens or pocket jacks. And I had small a small amount of reasons to believe my opponent was capable of being crazy, the, the ones I listed previously. But I did not really have a good reason. It's not like he had ran a sick bluff or anything that got shown or 
anything like that. And he was playing tightish, aggressive-ish. So I assume my opponent must be capable of a sick play, whereas in reality, maybe he is. Maybe my call is great because he does actually do it with queens and jacks. But um, I think until I had a better reason to think he was sick, I should have just folded. I mean, obviously, you just fold versus any standard type player. That should be perfectly clear. Uh, if he's only check-raising you on the river with two pair or better, obviously, you fold your top pair. But I was convinced that he was capable of bluffing, so I called and he did show the pocket kings. So that alone does not necessarily say my call was bad, but it sure feels bad. Uh, that took me down from double starting sack. I had pretty much doubled up with relatively few showdowns. I did make a set earlier in the day and got paid off. Made a lot of sets on this trip early in the day, and late in the day, uh, things have not gone well. So that put me back down to starting stack, and then from there, I hung around, got short, and then lost ace nine to pocket kings. A middle position guy raised who was very loose. I shoved 20 big blinds, ace nine offsuit. He had kings, and I was out of there. So kind of a frustrating tournament. This is actually the first tournament where I think I made an error that was significant. And the error was assuming the opponent must be crazy just because he was talking to a crazy kid and because he had done a few crazy plays but had never went to showdown. So I'm unhappy with myself about that. <laughs> um, so there are just a few more tournaments left. Tomorrow there are, is a six-handed tournament, like a 1,500 euro buy-in. Then the next day is a 5,000 turbo, which I may or may not play. Those have been getting tougher and tougher, it seems. And um, then there's a 2K turbo, which I think would, would still be pretty good. And then the net day after that, I'm going to play some online poker and then head home. So it's been a tough trip. I'm generally happy with my play besides the one big spot today on this entire trip. I have been focusing pretty well. I have been, I think I've been doing good. Even though I've, I've had no good results, I, I feel like I am playing well. And that's all you can really hope for. So... I just busted the last tournament of the series. It was a 2,000 euro hyper turbo thing. Um, and it was a pretty awful trip for me. I had zero caches. I feel like I played reasonably well. There were a few spots where I um, perhaps could have played better on this trip. But all in all, I'm actually happy with my play. Um, early in most of the tournaments, I actually got a double up. Today in the 2K, I got a, a double up and I think it's just mainly because I have a splashy active image and people were willing to pay me off. So that's good at least. <laughs> but once the stacks get short, I seem to not be doing too well in my all ends. It's actually kind of funny. I was looking at the, I don't know if you guys can hear that. It's howling wind outside. Today's Halloween. I was looking through the updates of the 10K high roller that's going on right now. I have a few friends deep in the tournament. And the people who, I mean, like, one of the guys who is currently the chip leader, he got it all in with ace-king versus ace-king, and won. And I'm not saying that's the kind of luck you need to win a tournament, but you definitely have to win your hands. And I, unfortunately, have not been doing that recently, especially once I've been getting deep. So, got to be a little bit luckier. But all in all, I'm happy with my play. I'm happy with this trip. I had horrible results, but the results are not all that matter. I, I think I played well, and did what I came out here to do. Uh, next for me is going to be a short trip to Jacksonville, Florida for a World Poker Tour event. I'm gonna be a bounty player there. And after that, I'm gonna be going to EPT Prague in December. So it's actually pretty soon. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't sound like too far away, but it, it's, or it sounds like a long time away in December, given it's November now, but it's gonna come before you know it. Um, I'm probably gonna play online tomorrow, tomorrow's Sunday, and then I'm flying out on Monday, so. Maybe I'll just win the Sunday Million and the trip will be saved.